Okay, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you're going to be dealing with these type of equations. And what we're looking at here is what we call a linear equation. You start seeing these things like in uh, middle school math, certainly like pre-algebra, definitely algebra one. So you need to know how to solve linear equations absolutely um, across the board for all of you out there that are studying algebra. So if you think you could do this, go ahead and pause the video, maybe put your answer into the comment section, but I'm going to teach you exactly how to solve this. We're going to go through this nice and slow step by step, and that's what you want to do. If you're going to do this problem or any other problem in math, you want to just do things one step at a time. So it requires you to uh, be neat and organized, just write uh, you know, each step. Don't try to do too many steps at once. That tends to get uh, students in trouble, and your teacher's not going to like it as well because they don't know what you're, you know, uh, thinking. They're like, okay, you went from here to here to the answer. I'm like, well, where's the work? Okay, so if you tend to kind of skip steps or, you, or you're like, you don't like to write everything out, well, that's your first thing that you want to start changing in terms of uh, uh, solving math problems, okay? If your teacher is writing things out step by step by step, then you need to be doing the same thing as well. But uh, I'm going to get into this problem here. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you the solution here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that are struggling in math. It doesn't have to be that way. So if you think you're a bad math student, that's not the case. What you need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a math section, I'm talking about things like the SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe GED, um, or a teacher certification exam, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my um, homeschool math program for middle and high school mathematics. If you need a pair of math notes, well, first of all, I'm going to say this. You should be learning how to take your own great, awesome notes. If you're not a good note taker, you need to learn how to improve. But in the meantime, you can use my notes to study from. I'll leave links to those in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve uh, this particular equation. Uh, and of course, the variable that we're solving for is m. So your answer is going to be m is equal to something. Well, what is that something? Well, I'm going to show it to you right now. That something, of course, is the solution. And m is equal to negative 2 over 21. That is the answer. Okay, so if you got that right, well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can have an extra special day. Nice job. Okay, Now, if you didn't get this, if you're like, wow, I knew I had the right answer, but you came up with a different answer, well, I'm going to show you ex the exact steps to solve this particular equation, but here's the deal, right? You're going to see my steps here in a second. And now, if you're comparing your work to my work, if you didn't write out all your steps, you won't know where you went wrong, okay? So that's why it's imperative that when you're um, solving math problems, you really have to be neat and organized. And for a lot of you out there, that's difficult. I know for me, I was super sloppy way back in the good old days and middle school and high school. Really, I didn't get um, uh, become uh, a neater until I was in college. I was forced to because that's, you know, you know there was just no <laughs> escaping my uh, uh, sloppy work. So if you're sloppy, work on becoming neater. But let's get into this problem right now. And here is a solution. Here's the problem. Here's a solution. We're going to walk through this one step at a time. Okay, so let's just keep our attention up here with the problem. And we have 7m uh, plus m minus 2 times 8m minus 1, parentheses, equals 12m uh, plus 9. So what are we kind of looking to do here? Let me give myself a little space. The main idea is we need to take the necessary steps so we can get all the variable terms over here. And, of course, that's all the things that involve m. So these things like this, all this stuff needs to scoot to the left-hand side of the equation. And then all of our numbers, okay, things like this 5 and this 9, uh, all that stuff need to be on the right-hand side. So really that's what we're trying to do. We're going to be shuffling things around such that we uh, get all our variable terms to the left-hand side. 
and all our numbers to the right hand side and then it's uh, very easy to solve the final equation once we do all that work. Now when we have an equation like this where there's parentheses these things right here is what we need to do first. Okay, This is a situation where we need to apply the distributive property. Okay, And this is huge in algebra. The, the actual property looks like this. A uh, times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. Okay, but what does that mean? Well, let me just give you a real, real fast example. If I have 3 times X plus 2, what this means is I can distribute this 3 to that X. So that would be 3X plus this 3 to that, times that 2 right there. So that would be 6. Okay? So you should be familiar with the distributive properties. One of the most important properties in algebra, at least the one that we use um, a ton of um, or frequently when we're solving equations. You actually use other properties, but you got to know the distributive property. So when you're uh, looking at a linear equation, the first thing you want to be doing is looking to see if there's any situations where you have to apply the distributive property. You'll, you'll know that if you see parentheses with a sum or difference. Anything like this, uh, you know, like 7x plus 2 or anything like that with a number outside of it, these are the things we have to do first. All right, so this is what we're going to focus in on as our first step. Now we've got to be very careful here when we do this uh, work. Let me scoot up this uh, problem right there. Okay, so here we go. So what we need to do is take this negative two, and it's not just the two, it's the negative two. You can, uh, if you're uh, confused about that, you can think of this as plus negative two, but this is a negative two. We're going to multiply it by this eight M. So negative two times, times eight M, going to use another color here, is negative 16 M. And then negative 2 times a negative 1. Now, if you're confused that this is a negative 1, you'd think of this as plus negative 1. So that's negative, and this is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. Okay? So negative 16 and plus 2. So this is the result of using the distributive property right here. And that is our first move uh, in terms of finding the solution to this equation. Okay, so uh, if I was your teacher and you're, this was your work, I'd be like, oh, they know how to do this trivial property. Very good. Check. And even if you got your final answer wrong, I would give you credit because you're showing me that you understand uh, components or parts of the, the solution here, the process to get the final answer. Okay, so now... Now we're, we're kind of scanning uh, the equation and I'm looking, do I have any more distributive property situations? No, I do not. So what do we have to do next? Well, what we have to do is combine like terms. So we're going to get all of our numbers and M's. And we're going to focus on this side of the equation, okay, independently from this side first. We're just going to clean up the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So when I look at, uh, look around, I'm like, oh, here's a 7M. Here's a negative 16m. These are like terms because the variables are exactly the same. And then I have two numbers I can combine. So let's go ahead and do that now. So 7m uh, minus 16m, we simply just add the coefficients, which is uh, uh, 7 plus a negative 16. That gives me negative 9m. And then 5 and 2, of course, is 7. So we're just kind of playing cleanup right here. So this is... Um, the result of cleaning up the left-hand side. The right-hand side, we just have a variable term and a number. So this is where we're at so far. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, there's nothing more we can do in terms of combining like terms on the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Uh, so now we have to start moving things over um, both sides of the equation here, okay? So what I'm gonna decide to do is I'm gonna get this variable term over on the left-hand side. Remember I, I told you that all the variables have to be on the left-hand side then all the numbers have to be on the right-hand side. You could uh, do the numbers first, the variables second. doesn't make a difference. I'm going to get this 12m over to the other side of the equation. So how do I do that? Well, I can subtract a 12m from uh, both sides of the equation. Remember in algebra, whatever you do to one side of the equation, uh, i.e. here I have a 12m on the right-hand side, I want to get rid of that 12m on the right hand side. So how can I get rid of it? Well, I'll have to subtract a 12M away. So that's great. However, um, I can't just do that all by itself. I have to uh, do things equally. Okay, that's the rule in algebra when you're uh, solving equations. You can do whatever you want as long as you do it equally to both sides of the equation. So I'll subtract a 12M here and a 12M here. And then you're gonna kind of add down in a column 
manner. So what you're going to have is negative 9m uh, plus a negative 12m. That gives me a negative 21m. 7 plus nothing is 7. Uh, 12m minus 12m is 0. So that just goes away. I don't have to write a 0. Then 9 plus nothing is 9. Okay. All right. So we're getting very close to the answer here. But we, we can't do anything until we get this number moved over here with this 9. So let's go ahead and move this 7 to the right-hand side of the equation. Remember, uh, we need to get all the variables to the left, which we do uh, now have all the variable terms to the left. We have negative 21m, but we don't have all the numbers to the right yet. So let's move this 7 over to the right. So how can we do that? I have a positive 7, so if I subtract a 7, that 7 goes away, but I need to do it to both sides of the equation. So again, we're going to add down like so. So negative 21m plus nothing is negative 21m. A uh, positive 7 minus 7 is 0. That goes away. 9 minus 7 is 2. And there we go. We have negative 21m is equal to 2. We are so close to the solution. So what do I need to do now to solve for my uh, variable m? Well, it's very simple. All we need to do is divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient. In this case, it's negative 21. So negative 21 divided by negative 21 is what? Well, a negative divided by negative is a positive. This is a positive 1. And we're looking to solve for m, but really there is a 1 in front of that m. We don't write 1m. We just write m like that. But 1m, or let's say uh, 1m, is the same thing as m. So negative 21 divided by negative 21 is a 1m or m. Okay? And so, of course, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 21. We get 2 divided by negative 21. We can't reduce, and we are good to go. There is our final answer, okay? Now, if you uh, were, in, like, in my math class, and you made a little error here, let's say you did 9 minus 7. Instead of putting 2, let's say you put uh, 3 or whatever the case is, and then you gave me your final answer over here as, let's say, uh, 3... Uh, over 21. I would probably give you probably 8 out of 10 points, okay, because you showed me so much good work. I'm like, okay, they just made a little uh, mistake there. Okay, they lost track of the numbers. That's not the end of the world. Your math teacher is, isn't going to punish you too much for getting your wrong answer or getting the actual uh, answer incorrect, okay? What they're going to um, be more interested in is, uh, do you know the procedure? Are you working the problems? Do you understand the concepts? That's what's key in solving any math problem, especially equations. And uh, if you're at this level of math uh, in terms of, you know, pre-algebra, algebra one, you want to practice, uh, you know, or improving the way you do math, okay? You're creating habits. If you write sloppy and you do your homework sloppy, you're going to do your quizzes sloppy and your tests are sloppy. And then, you know, that's how you struggle in mathematics. So when you want to improve in math, you're really looking at creating new habits. Okay, if you're sloppy, become neater. You don't have to be perfectly neat, just improve. If you take terrible notes, well, improve in your note taking. As you improve, everything else will start improving and then you'll start building momentum and you will um, eventually get to an excellent place in mathematics. Now, if you need more help uh, solving equations, linear equations, you might want to check out my pre-algebra, Algebra 1 course. Also, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel that go over uh, various equations. But uh, anyways, yes, I would um, uh, steer you towards any, any of those two courses. Of course, if you're at the Algebra 2 level and you're looking at this um, uh, video, you're like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Well, this is kind of basic stuff, so you really need to you know, um, you know, improve quickly because the type of equations you're doing in Algebra 2 or College Algebra or, or Pre-Calculus are going to be much more advanced than this. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.